Uh, I find Gibraltar an intoxicating and fantastic place. I think it's unique. I think from a personal perspective, my wife Doreen and I are really enjoying it. Doreen's going to be here with me for the tour. And from a professional perspective, I look at a vibrant headquarters and a vibrant command with challenges, which I can tell I've got uh, a lot of good work to be doing out here with my team, but really loving it. Thank you. Well, how different to your old post where you had responsibility for all UK submarines? It is very different in as much as the breadth of this job is far wider than the previous job. I mean, I was involved in, in delivering, helping deliver the continuous at-sea deterrence in the last job, so it's very important, but no more or less important in a very different way to the work I'm doing out here and far more demanding from, as I say, the breadth and the variety of my responsibilities that I have here, which I'm finding um, very encouraging and it, it helps me get out of bed in the morning. Well, at the age of 39, you were court-martialed for your involvement in the grounding of HMS Trafalgar. What were the circumstances? I mean, the circumstances, without going into too much detail, was a training exercise, very demanding, trying to get would-be commanding officers of submarines through their paces and grading them to be fit for that or not. So it was a, a very demanding serial that we were doing off the Isle of Skye. Um, my feelings about it and why I pleaded guilty is that you can't have these fantastic jobs, and that job was the commanding officer of the submarine command course, otherwise known for the odd few people out there that will know the, the title was teacher. Uh, you can't do jobs like that, and when it goes particularly well, you get fantastic plaudits and you bask in the glory. And then the corollary to that is that when it goes badly, you need to step up to the plate and take responsibility. So my view was that I needed to take responsibility for that incident. And all I'd add is that, yes, I was court-martialed, I did plead guilty, uh, but obviously look at me now, I've been given a fantastic job. So there is life after setback particularly with the Royal Navy and the Armed Forces as a fantastic employer. When no newcomer to The Rock, you were military assistant to Adam Ingram at the time, Armed Forces Minister, and Gibraltar very much on his agenda then. Yeah, it, it was. I didn't deal directly with uh, Gibraltar. Um, we split in his outer office the responsibility in, in helping him navigate his way through the issues into the different permanent joint operating bases, or the P jobs as we call them. So I actually had the Falkland Islands. But obviously I watched with interest in how he was dealing with what was, it seemed to me, from uh, across the way, uh, across the desk as a, a demanding scenario. Well, here now facing a number of challenges, and I'm sure that top of these must be the incursions into British Gibraltar territorial waters. Yeah, I mean, it is, I would say, Christine, that you, you are right, uh, tacitly, it is a, a high, high rate of incursion, illegal incursions. It's been like that now, it seems to me, for about two years, and we seem to be, have hit a plateau on that, but it could change uh, for the better or for the worse. I'll rule nothing in and I'll rule nothing out. But we're determined to make sure that every single illegal incursion is met by either uh, the Royal Naval Gibraltar Squadron or the Gibraltar Defence Police, all working in close concert with our colleagues from the Royal Gibraltar Police. Uh, but it is a challenging environment out there, and I'd just like to go on record to say that uh, those people that do a good job out there are very professional and so remarkable restraint, and they, need, they should be applauded for their efforts. And out of sheer curiosity, just how briefed is the CBF on this issue before he takes up the post? I was well briefed. I mean, it is a significant aspect of the job. Um, I was well briefed. What I've come out here and experienced thus far uh, resonates with the brief that I got. So I felt well briefed, I was well briefed, and therefore I'm in a good position to seamlessly take over the reins, so to speak, from the incursions perspective. With the global threat of terrorism and Gibraltar, of course, a naval base in close proximity to Morocco, has security been increased? What sort of security do we have? And how pleased are you with what we have? Uh, I have quite a few assets out here, Christine, to, do, to deal with the, the threat from both an immediate perspective of Gibraltar and then looking a little bit more wider across particularly, as you say, uh, the water to Northern Africa. Um, I need to be careful what I say here because it would be inappropriate to disclose all that I know uh, in an open forum, but I am confident that my team uh, are able to forecast ahead, analyse and forecast ahead threats in sufficient time that we, and by we I mean everybody to do with Gibraltar, would be in a position to have the right posture should a, a new threat uh, emerge. Well, if we can end this interview on a positive note, and I'm sure you must have enjoyed the ceremony of the Keys last night, and here, of course, for the regiment's 75th anniversary celebrations. 
Uh, I would say that I was massively proud and impressed with the Royal Gibraltar Regiment and what they did last night at the ceremony. I can see why the regiment is obviously close and dear to the hearts of, uh, of all Gibraltarians. Uh, and I would say that that sort of tradition is hard-earned, and as soon as you lose it, you never get it back. So I applaud Gibraltar for having that sort of tradition, and I've seen it copied and roundabout in spades around about Gibraltar. It's something that's pleasing to see, and long may it continue.